Hey guys, this is Intricate from AmigaLove.com and I wanted to do a really quick how to play video for the classic uh, Rogue. This game was copyrighted for Amiga back in 1986-87, somewhere in that ballpark. It says 86 here on this screen, but on the next one, um, or at least on the Amiga DOS screen when it loads the game initially, it'll show 1987, so it was somewhere in that ballpark. The game was originally written uh, on Unix and completely in ASCII characters. There were no graphics at all, um, but it became this huge cult following phenomenon, especially in universities. Um, as more and more people found it, it was basically freeware um, that was floating around and a highly addicting game based entirely on Dungeons and Dragons. It's got 26 levels of, uh, of the Dungeon of Doom. And you're supposed to get down to the base level of 26, find an amulet, and then get your butt all the way back up to level one. What's amazing about this game is that it's procedurally created. So as soon as I type in my name and press return, it's gonna generate all 26 levels into memory. It never seeks the disc. It knows it all, but every single level, all 26 are gonna be completely randomly organized. Every single monster, every single magical item, every potion, every scroll, every everything. It's all random. Now, there are rules around the randomness. You're not gonna get a, you know, a dragon on level one as you're walking around. You're only gonna see really low level monsters on level one. But the point is all of the map designs and all of the items inside the map as you as you travel it and as you discover more all random this basically they could have named this game random instead of rogue if they'd wanted to and it would have totally worked and i would have totally got it rogue sounds cooler and it looks cooler um, it is worth noting that there is no audio there's no sound it's completely silent the graphics are not amazing but they're really cute and they're just enough to give you the information. You have to understand this came from ASCII characters. So this looks like you're walking through a Pixar movie at that point. It is also worth noting that the Atari ST version, which was made at the same time, looks vastly different than the Amiga and many would argue looks vastly better than the Amiga version. Doesn't really matter though. It's all the same game. This game is the same game as the Atari. They made it for the Macintosh, black and white. They made it for, um, eventually, they made it for one of the TRS-80s, I believe. Um, but also, of course, DOS. And the original was ASCII characters. And you can find clones, you can find uh, versions of it out on the internet, and you can play in a browser if you wanted to, and play the original ASCII character style if you really desire that. Um, and, and a lot of people do that are totally into this game. That's the way they played it when they were kids or young adults, and that's the way, the way they want to play it now. For me, I'll take the Amiga version. It is worth noting that, um, so even though we have graphics, and this is a, obviously a more polished game than a, a little ASCII character, almost a BBS style type of game you would expect to find, on a bulletin board system back in the day. This does obviously look a lot nicer than that. You've got walls, these little things are doors. It's still not perfectly coded. There are some strange little glitches that you'll see. The refresh rate, the redraw of your graphics as you move into dark areas can sometimes be a little stuttery and a little glitchy. It's not the most highly polished game I've ever played, but it is one of the most addicting games I've, I've played in many, many years, and I couldn't recommend it more highly. If you like to do dungeon crawl type of games, this is really, this is one of the grandfathers of that entire genre. Some would argue it was in probably the top three or top four original dungeon crawlers ever made. There were a few others back in the late 70s that some have pointed to to say, well, this looks a lot like that. Um, and it came first and you could say, yeah, sure doesn't really matter they're all basically where it all started um, and a lot of people look at this one as being especially when you look at the genre uh, and how well they implemented the Dungeons and Dragons rules into it um, it's just a lot of fun are you gonna beat this game you're probably not 
And that's why this isn't uh, some sort of long play or it's not some sort of thing trying to sh where I'm trying to show you how to beat it. I'm just trying to show you how to have fun and how to actually play the game. So it, you do have to have a number pad, right? Um, sorry, Amiga 600 folks. You need a number pad to play this game, to play it right. Um, you really do. Um, north, south, east, west, you're going to be doing four, six, eight, two, right? Four, 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 six, six, six. 222 888 but there's also diagonals 111 and the diagonals are very important they help you instead of going right up you can just go diagonal up and you'll save one move and that doesn't sound like a big deal but when you're really worried about rationing your food and food is a big deal in this game because every time you move you're using a tiny bit of energy and all of, it all adds up and you can starve to death in this game if you use up too much energy and you don't have any food to survive. So you want to try and conserve as much energy as, as possible. And as you start to play this game for weeks and weeks and weeks like I have, you'll eventually get to the point where you can look at a screen and go, I'm not even going to travel in that direction because I know it's going to eat up my food and I know there's nothing there. So the screen. Basically, it's, it's laid out like, uh, like a tic-tac-toe grid. It's a, it's a three by three, okay? And there's always gonna be something in one of those three, uh, in one of those nine squares. All of the rooms are rectangular. There's never a funny shaped room. They're always rectangular, and there's always gonna be something in one of the nine. Now, it could be just a hallway that's a dead end, but that's considered a thing. You're never gonna have a blank spot with nothing leading to it, right? There'll always be at least a hallway that, that encroaches into the grid somehow. And I'll, hopefully, the, because it's all random, I don't know what we're going to find here, but hopefully I can, I can demonstrate that better as we move along. I'm going to go down a couple levels here and show you how to get around. If you hit the question mark, you can get to the entire list of commands that you're going to need to use in this game uh, beyond just moving around. I'll move my little mouse out the way. Kind of a useless they almost didn't really need, even need to do this but because it has because it has the ability for you know to use a mouse with an amiga of course they had to do something with it and what did they do well they gave you the same the same commands right here god forbid you ever actually have to use this just just learn the keypad it's not that hard there's not that many things you're going to need to do anyway it's mostly dropping objects um it's going to be reading scrolls Quaffing potions, which is a, just a funny word for drinking things. Um, t taking on and putting uh, off armor, weapons, rings, things like that. Going up and down a staircase. Hilarious. I've never once had the chance to go up a staircase yet. Um, but in any case, I did try and it wouldn't let me. There was a magical barrier that prevented me from doing it. You can't go up until you find the amulet apparently. So anyway. Let's go search around a little bit. So you can see I'm this little dude in the hallway. There's another rectangular room. Now I just picked up a little pot of gold. That's worth noting because it's a really old school way of thinking, but um, the gold that you find in this game is your score. Was that fair? No. Gold is scattered across each level and uh, completely randomly. And each little, each little uh, pile that you find is a random number. I could have found 10 monsters on here, killed them all, and found one thing of gold. That gold is my score. All those monsters I killed doesn't affect my score at all. Now, all the monsters you killed affects your experience, which will increase your, as you go up in class and go up in levels um, as a character, your hit points will increase. That's a big deal. So you're still going to do that. But basically, when it comes to gold, it, it only affects your score and nothing else will. Which seems a little weird, but what it, what it boils down to is this. It's sort of a philosophical choice by you, the player, if you want to even pick it up or not. Because at the end of the day, your score doesn't mean jack. All that really matters for, the, for a lot of people is to try and finish the game. Picking up gold isn't going to impact that one way or the other. In fact, it hurts your chances, some might argue, to pick up the gold at all because you're going to have to go use up energy to go grab it, to go walk over to it and, and pick it up. 
Um, I actually do pick it up because I don't think I'm ever going to finish this game. I would love to, but I don't think it's... It's probably not likely. It's such a difficult game once you get beyond level 12, level 13. Um, so I pick it up because when I die, I try and get onto the high score list, which I'll probably show you here if I'm really unlucky. Um, also, if you hold down the shift key or the control key and one of your directionals, you can you can cruise through. Oh man, I just found a hobgoblin. Okay, good. Uh, sometimes those hobgoblins can kill you when you're really low level like I am. But if you hold down shift or control and you do a directional, you can zip through these uh, areas really quickly until you hit something of note, like a wall, Beep, like that, see? Now I would only ever use this trick um, in a room that I'd already explored um, or in a hallway. If, it, if I entered a room that was completely dark, and they do have these, as you go down, you'll go into a room where you can only see about uh, one, one square around you, basically your lamplight. They call those dark rooms. I would never use that uh, strategy in a dark room because you could run into a monster that you can't see. And some monsters in this game don't move. They just sit there. For instance, the leprechaun. And if you're really into building your score, watch out for those guys. Because if you hit a leprechaun, they usually don't die in one hit. Right? And as soon as it's their turn to hit, they always hit you the first time. And what do they do? They don't hurt you. They steal your gold. And they steal a lot of it. And so that can be really painful. So you want to kind of take it easy if you're actually really into your score. Or you could run into what's called a nymph. And she's basically sort of like the leprechaun, but instead of stealing gold, she'll randomly steal one of your items that's in your backpack. That can be amazingly painful if she steals a wand or a really powerful scroll, something like that. That little thing right there is a bat. He's basically useless. He's kind of a, just a pain in the ass and I just avoid him unless I have to kill one. They're just a waste of my time. Okay, now I'm about to go jump onto some bread. It looks like a loaf of bread. That is my food. And this is a Kestrel and they're just kind of a waste of flesh too, but they love to attack you. So you just get them out of your way. All right. So you can start to see how I'm building my tic-tac-toe grid. There's basically, there's four pieces missing right now. Let's see if we can find them. Yep. So that are my stairs down. That's stairs to get down to level two. Now, what? here's a door here and there's a door here. Let me get this thing out the way. There is absolutely no reason for me to go from here to here if I'm trying to conserve energy to figure out what's in between. I know there's a hallway connecting these two, right? However, in this particular case, I think, okay, what's the shortest distance from here to there? Or do I want to go from here to there? Those are the only two doors that I have not opened. I'm actually going to guesstimate. Da -da 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 -da. It's about the same. I'm just going to go back the way that I came because I'm, I'm lazy and I'm next to a hallway and I can just I can just do some of that zippy stuff. Oh, by the way, Amiga 600 people, you're not completely out of luck with this game. You actually can uh, use your mouse to move, but oh man, I pity you if that's how you play this game because that would suck. That really would. Um, and it's not the game's fault. This game was not meant to be played with a mouse. It was meant to be played with a number pad. That's all. Like a lot of role-playing games, a lot of CRPGs. Okay, this is looking like a pretty lame level one. I'm not seeing much of anything. Oh, look at that. So that's considered a thing. Just because there's no room here doesn't mean, oh, where's my other ninth room? You're not gonna necessarily have nine rooms, but you're gonna have nine quadrants of something. This could have been a dead end that just stopped right there. And that's the way it is sometimes. And that's considered the ninth thing. So anyhow, now I need to get all the way back over here so I can go to level two. And I will be right back after I get there. Okay, so here's one of the dark rooms. So see how it can only show me what's immediately around me? This is where you want to walk really slowly. You don't want to walk into a monster that's just sitting there waiting to kick your butt or steal your shit. So, I found another potion. 
And I'm just, this is not what I would normally do, but let's just do it. Wait, what's going on? What? Hoo -hoo. So I just drank a potion of confusion. So as I'm pressing up, 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 I'm not going up. I'm just going all over the place because I'm confused. And an ice monster is now attacking me and I'm confused and oh, he better not kill me. Um, okay. So the beautiful thing about the ice monster is that it's actually really wimpy and very easy to kill and it is full of experience points. So you'll notice I just killed it and I instantly moved up a rank to apprentice. It's awesome. If I can find an entire level where every room has an ice monster in it, I am one stoked dude because I'm gonna I'm gonna jump up four or five levels right then and there. So you'll see as I jumped up in level, my hit points increased. I'm now to 26. I was down to what 15 or something like that before. It was a nice big boost. So even though I was hurting by being stuck with by stupidly drinking the confusion potion right before I got attacked. Um, now I feel pretty safe. 17 points on level two is plenty for me to walk around and not really feel scared about anything. And if I just could find a few more of those ice bones. So to conserve food, should I go north and hit that door? Why would I? I mean, maybe later I might need to, but for now, there's no sense in me trying to explore that because I know what it is. Save your energy. I will go down though, because I don't know where that is going to lead me to. And it led me to this room. So there's something here. I'd have to go back here and go down to that door to find that dude, right? Because remember, you're looking at basically a tic-tac-toe grid on this game. I'll just walk around that Kestrel because he doesn't seem to care. Oh, he is following me now. If they're not going to attack me, a lot of times I'll just leave them because they're not even really worth the experience. They're just kind of a pain. Move arrow. Um, you'll notice I'm down to 12 hit points out of 26. What you can do to get some of that back when you're in a state like I am, you're not really thinking about food so much. You're just trying to survive these early levels until you increase. You can type in a number like 30, and that's like 30 units of time, whatever that is supposed to be, and click the rest button. Ah, and a hobgoblin came after me. Great. He's probably going to kill me now. Great. Unless I get lucky. Ah, oh, he is going to kill me. Okay, I defeated him. I got really lucky. I'm down to two hit points. Sometimes those guys can be really just gigantic pains in your butt. Um, they're not particularly strong. I usually can beat them in one or two hits. Uh, a lot of times it's one hit, but you, you do miss them a lot when you're only just starting out the game. Um, and they have this t really annoying tendency to end your game very quickly when you're in first or second level. So I'm going to type in 60 this time and hit the rest button. And now I'm up to 10 out of 26. I'm just going to burn my food up because I don't want to find another hobgoblin and have him kick my ass. So now I'm up to 18. That's pretty good. You'll also notice as you, as you walk around, you'll gain points back too, especially as you increase in uh, level. If I was a sixth or seventh level character, right now I'm only apprentice, I think that's level two. If I was a sixth or seventh or eighth level character, walking every other step, I'm getting a point back. It's awesome. And you need it. Trust me, it gets scary. Okay, so there's literally nothing there. So I'm gonna, I am gonna go north now. Get out of my way. Um, and go find over here. So there are the stairs. And some gold, which I'd pick up because I'm a lamer. <laughs> I'm going for points. I'm a lamer. Why don't you try to finish the game? I am trying to finish the game. But if you really want to be completely 100% cold-blooded analytical about it, you'd skip all that stuff. You'd just go straight for the straight for the items and get the heck down to the next level. So I just picked up some armor. Let's look at my inventory by typing I. Here's all the stuff I've picked up. You'll see I have two rations of food. That's the ring mail that I'm wearing right now, plus one ring mail, which gives me armor class five, which is really good. Chain mail, I think, gives me five naturally, but I don't know if it's cursed or not. So if I were to put this on and not identify it first, I run the risk of this being something like negative two chain mail, and you can't take it off 
unless you have a remove curse scroll. So I usually just let these sit because five is pretty damn good anyway. So I'm, I'm happy with five, but if I find a, a, a handful of identify scrolls, I might reveal this later and find out if it's worth putting on or not. Then I have the mace that I'm wearing in my hand. You can only have one weapon in a hand at a time. Then this next thing is a bow. That is a piece of garbage. Just drop it because you can throw arrows if you want to and they really kind of suck. A lot of times I just get rid of these altogether. I, I have thrown arrows at things and it basically is the same thing as the bow. The bow gives you plus one to hit it doesn't hardly do any damage anyway. So it's just a waste of your inventory. So I usually just get rid of it, uh, but you can't, oh, you can. You don't really want to drop inside of a hallway if you ever think you're going to go back in that hallway because then you're pick, as soon as you touch it, you're going to pick it up again. So, but since I'm never going to come back this way, I'll just drop it right here and I'm going to drop my bow. I'll keep the arrows for now. You never know, you never know. And I'm going to go this way. I'm starting to get hungry. See right here, I don't know if you can see that on my screen or not. The contrast is a little a little annoying. Um, but basically it says, let's see if I can change, there you go. It says I'm hungry. Don't eat. Don't eat when, it, when you're hungry, just wait. There's no rush. You can wait until it says you're weak. In fact, I found out earlier today, you don't even have to eat until uh, you faint. You can faint from hunger and then eat and then you're, and you'll still survive. You want to conserve the food as long as you possibly can. Okay, so we're going down that level. Now look at this. If this were level 12 and I landed in here and I see that the stairs are right there, I would just go right down. I'd just go straight down to the next one. I'm not going to go browsing around in a deep, dark dungeon when the monsters are super scary, where you find one and you're dead. Uh, here's slime. These guys can divide and separate and they can be a real pain sometimes but I got him. So here's a scroll. All right, this was one of the things I wanted to show you before we sign off. This says, you now have a scroll titled Widez His Squex Jeh. It's basically someone vomited and <laughs> tried to type down the sound effect for it. Um, every single time you play this game, these, these names of the scroll are completely random. Everything's random, like I said before. So this might be, let's pretend, this might be a uh, identify scroll. Every single identify scroll on this game that I'm playing right now will be called Wit has his ex. Okay, once I know what this scroll will do, it will let me name it. So let's go ahead and read it because you're not going to ever get hurt by a scroll. As you read the scroll, it vanishes. Your mace glows blue for a moment. So this is an, I've learned over time, this is an enchant weapon. It will increase my ability to hit and do damage typically. Um, glows blue for a moment. So I'm gonna call it Enchant Weapon. So every other, every other scroll with that exact same name that I find in this game, I'll now be told it is an Enchant Weapon scroll and I don't have to use it to waste it to find out what it was, which is nice, but it is kind of sucky. You have to, you have to use it before you know what it is the first time. Because, man, stuff in here is just so hard to come by. It's a little painful. But let's go to inventory really quickly. See, now it's plus two. It was plus one, plus one, which is plus one to hit, plus one damage. Now it's plus one to hit, plus two damage. That's pretty damn good, guys. Come on. So let's keep going. And it will wear off eventually. There's a hobgoblin. I kind of want to kill him just for what he did to my family in the past. So here's a weird hallway, check this out. Oh, he followed me down here, the jerk. And I killed him. Okay, so that might just be the thing. That's the thing. Most likely, I could search over here by pressing S, but I, I've just learned over time, based on the shape of some of these things, there's nothing down there. Um, there's another potion. And it's a white potion. And there's like every color of the rainbow down here. There's a lot of different stuff. There are uh, sites out there dedicated to this game where you can try and figure out the different types of potions that potentially exist. 
but you'll still never know what you've got until you drink one or you identify it. So it's up to you to decide if you want to go look that stuff up or not. The only thing that I would recommend doing is actually uh, looking up, and I can put this in uh, an attached article. I, I, I will. I'll, I'll put it in an attached article just for, for those that hang out at amigalove.com for you uh, 20 folks out there. Um, and I love you all deeply. Um, if you decide you want to play this game, it is worth knowing what the different sensations and sounds and whatnot you're told you hear or feel when you read scrolls. You're going to want to know what it means when your hand, when your hands are glowing red, or you hear a high-pitched humming, or uh, someone's watching over you. You want to know what those mean, and it is there is really no backstory to this game. There's nothing. It's in your mind. This is a solitaire game of Dungeons and Dragons between you and a 20-sided die that's being rolled by a demon, an evil demon, and it is going to kill you. So you might as well go find out what these scrolls can potentially do and learn about it, and I'll help you with that part on, in the attached article for this. So I'm just kind of uh, going through this weird intestinal hallway, and you can see it's leading me nowhere. So this is a really interesting use case because where should I go? You're not going to find, usually, it's possible, but usually you're not going to find a door if I were to search over there. Ugh, get out of my way. This purple thing looks like you're being attacked by Barney, but it's literally an emu. <laughs> it's something that you wish you could feed at a petting zoo and maybe ride if it was a, a really cool, if you could slap a saddle on one of those, wouldn't that be fun to ride? Come on. Um, but if you hit the S about five times, then you skip and hit it down again. Oh, isn't that interesting? So it's worth noting, there's only ever one door possible on any side of one of these rectangular rooms. And never on the outside. It's only going to be on the inside. So there's only ever going to be one door on this wall, that wall, or that wall. Doesn't mean it'll have one, but that's it'll never have two doors on the same side. Okay. Um, and what's interesting is, oh, I feel very weak. You faint from lack of food. So I might have lost a couple hit points. It's not going to kill me. Now I'll hit eat. Okay. Um, and I'll eat. Yeah, it didn't actually hurt my, it didn't actually hurt my hit points at all. It just, it just kind of, you can die from it. If you, if I didn't have any food to eat, I would have, I could have died from that. But you just wait until that happens before you bother eating. All right, so the only other place I could possibly have a door would be up here. Oh, look at that. I found it. Search, 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 baby. Yeah. Mmm. And look at that. A bow. Should I? I really don't want it. Piece of crap. I do all that searching and give me a bow? Really? And now there's a dark room down here. So I'm gonna walk slowly and look what I found. Can you see what that is? That diagonal line of pixels is a wand, a maple staff. My bad, not a wand. There's sta staves and wands, a staff, but I still don't know what it does. So you can actually, you can use it and potentially find out what it does, but you'll never know how many charges it has. It could have three, it could have five, it could have seven. And if it's not obvious what it did, you just blew a charge, uh, which sounds kind of funny, um, and not know what the hell you just did. And it could be very powerful and you could have just wasted it. So I'm gonna hang on to that. And that's the kind of thing I'm gonna wait until I find an identify scroll for before I use it. Because I love staves and I love wands. They are awesome. And look at that, you guys are being sweet to me now. Because that's a nice monster. And they give you lots of experience. And I'm a lamer, so I took some gold. Because that's what I do. I'm totally lame. It's funny. You cannot, um, you cannot attack diagonally or move diagonally when you're standing in a doorway unless you throw something. You can throw something diagonally, but, <laughs> but you, can't, you can't attack diagonally. There's some weird little quirks to this game like that that you figure out over time. And I'm not going to tell you guys every single little thing here. I want you to find a lot of this stuff on your own. This is just a basic how-to, get around, and see if it's something that you might enjoy playing as well. 
because um, I really do think a lot of you out there who've never played it and you're into fantasy or adventure games, man, it's, it's fun. It really is because the randomness, while it makes it excruciatingly brutal, and it's permadeath. You die, you start over. There are no three lives, there's no hearts, there's no none of that. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Okay, so this is a crazy looking, woo. All right, so we're gonna go slow. Okay, there's a slime. These guys can really suck sometimes when they start to divide. Okay, there's some food, sweet. All right, I have a staff, I really, there's my steps down. Now look at that, this is a dark room, but they did it, this is really clever. Even though it's a dark room, if you find the stairs, they keep that illuminated for you so that you can still see it so if you've moved over into the, another part of the level, you can remember, oh yeah, you don't have to sit there and jot it down. They're gonna at least give you some, some helpful tips like that visually so you know what the heck's going on. So this is probably a dead end. But because I'm in level four, I still wanna explore this because I'm not scared of these creatures most of the time, shoot. See, these slime are really not cool. So I gotta go heal myself, because that one was, they were dividing so many times, and you can run away and they'll chase you too. So I'm, I'm gonna kinda run far away, and I'm gonna go 40. <sighs> Shoot, don't kill me down here. Yeah. I might, oh, phew, I almost died. I'm down to seven hit points. And the slimes find, found me, but they're a, that's hilarious, they're above me. So if I can sneak out of here, I should be able to get past them now, yay. And, because there's still something, there's something potentially up here. Yeah, so if I were to go down, if I were to go down that, well, you know what? I'll show you guys what happens. Let's say I want to go up a level. I want to get out of here. I want to go back up where I came from. Your way is magically blocked. Yeah, you can't go up until you find the amulet. You know what? I've got a bad feeling about this level, so I'm going to go ahead and go down. And that worked out well. There's more food for me. Sometimes you can get too much of that stuff, by the way. And there's more of my lamer gold. You suck so bad getting the gold. I know. Now I'm going to go... Rest again, click. Now, you know what? I do have some potions here, and this is really dumb, but who cares? Hey, you begin to feel better. I just took one of those, and it happened to be a healing potion. I got really lucky. Now I'm 31 out of 35. So now I feel much better. And the next time I find one of those potions, it'll tell me it's a potion of greater healing, or whatever it was that I just did. And now it says, you have now you now have a scroll called Enchant Weapon. That's the name I gave it. Titled Wizaz Wizaz. All right. Next time I play this game, it's going to be a completely different random set of characters. Starting all over. See how that's starting to work? Pretty cool, right? And look at that. I just totally toasted that hobgoblin. He didn't even. Because I went up to Adventurer now. La la. And now I have 44 hit point potential maximum, which is awesome. Now I'm starting to get, now I'm starting to feel bold and brash. I'm starting to feel like I, I might even look a bit like Conan. Well, I kind of do, don't I? Come on. Although strangely, if you look really closely at this character, it's like this dude with a little pink hat and like, is that a pussy hat? Was he was he protesting something? What the hell? Um, <laughs> it's what it totally looks like. Why does he have a pink hat on? I don't know. Oh, these slimes! You slime! Let's let's just kill them, shall we? I, I oh wow! And I finally beat them all. Look at that! I destroyed them. And now I have a scroll titled Zavrvatan Blah. So I'm going to read that because you guys are watching. Look at all of these things. Let's just read them all, shall we? You read the scroll, it vanishes. You feel as somebody is watching over you. 
that's a really, really powerful remove curse scroll. I wish I had more than one of those and I would just slap on that chain mail that I have and not worry about it. But that was the only one I had and I used it. Oh well, next time I find one, if I survive, I'll know what it is. Slowly, 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 slowly. And I'm about to turn this off soon, guys, because I think you kind of get the gist of this. You're going to either like it or not by now. Okay, so where should I go? Where should I go? Something's here, but there's no door there and there's no door there. I'm willing to bet. I'd buy that for a dollar. I'm willing to bet it's somewhere on this, this wall here. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Skip, skip. One, two, three, four, five. la di da well okay how rude now, sometimes it's more than five searches and that's when you're just like you troll in game illegal command i wasn't trying to there there it is right there see see and all for nothing nothing but a zombie stupid zombie and i'm getting hungry how can i be hungry while i'm looking at a zombie does that even make sense you guys didn't think about that, did you? No. What kind of game design is this, anyway? Um, okay. All right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else you might want to know before I unplug. Let's see, look at this. It's all going to be dark rooms now. See, I'm on level six. I'm getting hungry. So let's go ahead and... Okay, there's a room with some light in it. That was a wacky little... So that is probably going to lead to the, somewhere. Number key. Feels so good to have one. Don't you wish you had one? Omega 600. Okay, so this is a rattlesnake. These guys suck. When they hit you, they actually knock your strength down and it's it's permanent unless you have a restore strength scroll um which is an awesome is it a scroll or a potion now i can't remember because i'm on camera and it makes me all weird and forgetful um there oh gee whiz 22 he's hurting me okay i'm getting hurt got to get out of here. Um, quaff? A white potion? You can't move. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Well, I can move again. Read. D. Ah, look at that. I found the map scroll. Oh, and these are all dark rooms. Cool thing about the map scroll, it shows you where the stairs are. So now I know where I need to get to. I want to avoid that room right now, I think, but they're probably going to find me anyway. Um, I'm, I might be toast. We'll see. Uh, ho, ho! I sneaked in the back door and got the bread. And the gold. Lamer gold. There we go. Oh, really? You want some of this? You sure you want some of that? Oh, man, snake. Stay away from me, dude. I'm getting down. I don't care about that potion down there. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm in trouble now. Mm. Well, shoot. What, my strength's down to 13, 12. Bastard. Well, you begin to feel better. So that was just a, a minor healing potion is all that was. Level seven and weak. You are weak. You weak and you suck and you pathetic. And, um, so I'm actually going to eat now. Oh, I could eat a mango. Anybody like mango? Isn't that kind of weird to find fruit like a mango in a dungeon of doom? I think so. But it sounds exotic. Don't you think? No. It just sounds weird. Um, you can get, if memory serves... There's something to do with mangoes. 
And I don't think it has to do with mango necessarily. It could be like mangoes, mango juice. I forget, but there's something to do with mangoes that can help you see invisible creatures. Um, I think. Ah, there we go. Well, if it, gold's gonna just be sitting there, I might as well take it, right? It was just right there on the floor. It is worth noting that in my particular, uh, my particular experience, I tried playing this on my Amiga 2000, which has extra RAM built in to a accelerator card, all this other stuff. It wouldn't work. It would load the menus. I could see all this stuff, but it wouldn't actually show me any of the graphics. So I moved it over to my stock Amiga 1000, which is what I'm showing you this on right now. And the only thing I had attached to the Amiga to uh, 1000 was a, a, a side expansion of two megabytes of RAM. Same thing, wouldn't work, wouldn't show me any of this stuff. The only way I could get this to work, guys, was to actually unplug that side expansion of RAM and use a bare bone stock Amiga 1000. That was the only way I could get it to work on my classic hardware. Um, that I've been using up to this point, which was really weird. It's the only game I've ever had that particular experience with where it didn't, it didn't work with expansion RAM. Um, it just very well could be pure chance that both of the machines I tried, that's the way it worked, but it just wouldn't load the graphics. The game would play. You could see I was finding things. I would tap, I would move around. It was pure darkness. It, it, it would totally work. I just couldn't see anything. So it was unplayable until I made this completely stock. Some folks out there may have a different experience. Um, maybe there's a different crack out there that uh, doesn't have that problem. This particular one does. And this is the one that I most likely will be sharing on AmigaLove.com for download for anyone else who would like to try and play this game. And if you do, holy smoke, let me know. And let me know what your high scores are as you, uh, as you attain them over time, over the years. And uh, God, uh, if, if you ever got to the end and actually finished this thing, take a picture of your screen. I'd love to see what that looked like. Anyway, guys, I think this is probably far enough. I'll call it here. And then I'll finish this game as soon as I turn this off because I'm doing okay. Um, this is Rogue, uh, published by Epix. It was developed by AI Design sometime in 1986 or 87 based on the 1980 absolute classic um, I highly recommend it if you've got a machine that can play it and if you don't you know what use an emulator you're not gonna miss out that much in this particular case because this game is pretty basic it's all about the roll of the dice and if, uh, it doesn't even necessarily have to be the Amiga version. If you have an Atari ST and you somehow stumbled across this video, or maybe it was, uh, uh, maybe, you, maybe you're really into uh, wanting to play it in the ASCII version. You're gonna have to learn more. You have to learn what all those different characters mean, but that's okay. Print it out, set it down on the table and play. The game is a lot of fun. If you're playing one of the original ones like this one and have a total blast with it, get into your D&D &D mindset. Don't get stressed out because um, it's not a stressful game. It's just a lot of fun, very, very addicting, very simple to pick up, and a lot, I said it a million times, I'll say it again, it's just a lot of fun. Um, I've, been, I've been addicted to it straight for a while now, so. And my brother's been playing it for over 15 years, potentially closer to 20. Um, good Lord, Garth, find some more games to play, dude. Jeez. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Intricate from AmigaLove.com. And uh, this has been Rogue, how to play, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy.